Hello, today I want to run through some of the woods that I use for Japanese woodblock printing. So I'm going to start with plywoods and the nice thing about plywood is that it's a very stable construction. So ply is made with thin sheets of wood that are glued together and pressed to make a stable sheet of material and the wood is, is crisscrossed as it's pressed so the layers are at 90 degrees to each other and that means that you end up with a very very stable material that doesn't warp um, or cup and also um, you can have it in very big sheets as well. So ply is kind of the starting point for me with Japanese woodblock and I use various ones. So I'm going to start with the cheap and cheerful. So this stuff is uh, economy it's sometimes it's called Sheena ply. Um, I buy it from Great Art in the UK as Asian ply. Um, and it's it's what I would use to teach beginners on a two day workshop where they are getting a taste of the process and they're creating their first artwork. It's quite thin layers and it's it's very reasonable. It's a good economy product for playing with. You usually, when you buy a sheet of this, get one side that's completely seam free. And when I say seam, I mean where pieces of wood have been joined together in the making process. And then you'll get one side with a seam. So you, you can probably see here, I've got an S here marking a seam. So we'll talk about it more later in the process. But if you have a seam like that in your plywood, don't put a wood block over it to print. You can still use the wood, but don't put your block across the seam because as you'll see, this is a very wet printing method. And if you have a seam running through the middle of your wood block, water's going to get in, seam's going to open up and you're going to end up with a nasty ridge. So economy Asian ply, great for playing with. I wouldn't invest a lot of time in cutting something spectacular because this isn't very durable. So. The next one, and this is my bread and butter wood for using, is the sometimes referred to as professional grade um, Sheena ply from Japan. This is made by a company in Japan called Woodlike, and Woodlike do have um, a foreign language website where you can see the products in English and are probably other languages, I'm not sure. And they do ship abroad. But I know that um, hand printed in the UK and in Taglio stock this and maybe other people as well. So this is Sheena, which is a nice, soft, easy to cut wood, which will still give you a crisp result. It's um, a sturdier product, so there are thicker layers of the ply, and it's my go-to wood for most of my wood blocks. With the professional grade like this, you don't get the seams on the surface as you do with the economy grades. So you don't have to sort of plan where you're going with things so much. And I'll be using this quite a bit in this project. So that's Sheen Apply. And there are some other ones here that I just want to run through very quickly. Birch ply. This is uh, a good grade birch ply from a timber merchant. So this is actually a construction material. And I've used birch ply very successfully for doing great big wood blocks where sheen ply doesn't come in a large enough size. And the thing about birch is that, and this is six mil birch, by the way, um, it cuts very well, but it's hard. It's much harder physically to cut. You need to sharpen more often. Sharpening is another thing we'll address. And the other thing about it is it's quite deceptive. You can have one sheet that is not easy to cut, but perfectly all right to cut. And then the next sheet will be like concrete and you can't really tell from the grain. So you can't work out which is the hard sheet and which is the better sheet. So birch ply, good product, comes in great big sizes, but you'll develop some cutting muscles using it. So birch ply. The other ply I've got here is called Baltic ply. 
And this was recommended to me by a um, an audience member on a live stream. I haven't actually cut with it yet. This is um, a plywood that I think is quite popular in Scandinavia for doing woodblock. And apparently it's a bit easier to cut than birch. So I'm going to use this in this set of uh, blocks for this print so that I can play with it and see how it goes. So Baltic ply, I got this from Jackson's uh, Art Supplies and I'm excited to use it and we'll see how we get on with it later in the programme. And finally, I've got this rather lovely thing. And this is Japanese cherry ply. This is again from Woodlike. I bought this from him in person in Japan. Um, and it's an expensive product, but it's very beautiful. I, hopefully you can see here the thickness of the cherry. Now this is designed for professional carvers in Japan to use for Japanese woodblocks. It's a very beautiful product. It's finished to a sort of very glassy, smooth state. And cherry is the wood that was always traditionally used um, during the Edo period for cutting um, blocks. And it's very crisp, it's very defined, it's a lovely product. Now, I'm going to talk more about plywoods and cutting and printing in the traditional manner. I'm very excited because um, fellow printmaker and expert carver Will Francis, who some of you may already know, is going to come and do a film or two with me for this series where we're going to look at more traditional approaches as well. So, you know, watch this space for more news on plywood. So that's the cherry ply. So now I want to talk to you about a couple of solid wood products. Um, here I have solid cherry. Now this was given to me by Will Francis. Um, his dad is a master carpenter and they had some cherry and he was very generous and gave me a chunk of it. Now, beautiful though this is, solid woods are a harder product to use, especially in combination with other blocks for Japanese wood block printing, simply because a solid wood rather than a plywood is a mobile thing. When it gets wet, it changes shape, it expands. Um, and it can carp and it can warp and things like that. So it's technically a harder wood to use when printing. I'm not going to use this for this project because it's too small a piece. And if I were going to use this, I would probably design a print where the registration wasn't absolutely critical because I would expect this to be much harder to manage at the printing stage when it's wet and it's changing shape. So, you know, hats off to the experts who used solid cherry in the past and still got fabulous registration. So that's that. The other um, solid wood that's available for woodblock printing, at least in the UK, is solid poplar. And I should say with all these woods, this is the side grain that we're looking at. So you can see here on this poplar, that's why I've remembered, because I can see the grain really clearly here. So we're looking at the side grain of the wood rather than looking at the end of the plank or, or uh, trunk or branch. And this is uh, poplar wood. It's, it's lovely to cut and it gives you a really nice crisp outline. But again, it's a solid wood and it's quite slender. And when I've talked with this, we've had slight issues about it cupping when it gets wet, it curves and things like that. So again, registration can be trickier to handle with these solid, uh, solid woods. So same goes for poplar. This is softer than the cherry to cut, I should say. So those are all woods that you will see are nice and smooth. They've been machined and they're kind of ready to go. What I might do if I were, before I started to print, is to give them a little bit of a sand with a fine sandpaper. So here, this says P400 on the back, which I hope is a reference to how fine it is and not something random. It's a sort of uh, very fine sandpaper and it would really be a very gentle tickle with the grain just to smooth the wood further 
um, before I started, but basically those woods are already prepared to start with. Now I want to move on to the exciting world of more random wood that I've found. And um, I'll start with this piece of yew. So yew again, and it's a fantastic shape, this. And you can see I've already burnt it and I've used it in a print. Now, when wood is random like this, um, it's you need to sometimes build a jig to set up registration. And that's something we're going to look at in this series. So it's possible to work with quite odd shaped pieces of wood. And I used this print in a series of monoprints called uh, Near Apple Cross. And here is an example of that series. And you can see the block being used in the sky and in the reflection of the water in this print. The next bit of wood I didn't even buy. Normally I go to uh, timber merchants and I look at their bin end where they put all the surplus. Um, this is actually a scaffolding plank or the end of a scaffolding plank that I found in the back garden of my son's flat and it's just lovely. It's got lots of texture already. I won't have to burn it. What I will do before I use it is to give it a really good brushing and get rid of all the loose wood. So wood doesn't have to be fancy. In fact, the pines uh, are often really, really good for, for woodblock printing because they have like amazing grain. Other things you can look at are uh, roof shingles and stuff like that. So, you know, there's lots of stuff out there that's really interesting. And lastly, here is a lovely piece of elm and beautiful grain in this, you can see. If I turn this one over, you can see I've already used it a couple of times for different prints. And this block here I used for the print that is on the cover of my book. So if I put those two side by side, you can see how I've used the shape of the grain to make the top of this enormous hill in this print. And while we're on the subject of books, this is by Crowwood Press and it's very much aimed, I wrote it to very much hold the hand of someone who was starting out or making wood blocks. So it's very much more step by step um, and simpler process than this series of films. So um, if you want something to sort of add to, to this series, then that book's available from booksellers. I don't stock it, um, but you can get it all over the place now. So that's the book. And the final thing that I would say about using these various different woods is if you're using a piece of wood like this, don't be afraid of rough edges and bark and knot holes and stuff like that. The only thing to watch out for if you are using wood, and let's grab this piece of oh, scaffold timber to show you. This is very old bit of pine, so it won't be a problem. But if you are using fresh wood and it has knots in it, just watch out that resin doesn't come seeping out of it. Um, when you burn it, you may find that resin actually bubbles up out of the knots when you're working. So be sure to get rid of it and scrub it off and just watch it doesn't emerge when you're printing because it acts almost like a resist um, if it does come out of the wood. The other thing that you may find if you use wood like oak, which I have used, is that you may find you get tannin when you wet it. The wood may start to go very black, tannins coming out of the wood. Now, I have found with the oak that I've used, although the wood itself has turned black with tannings, tannins, I should say, um, it's not actually been an issue when I've been printing. So it hasn't affected the print, but I've always been very careful when I've wet the wood to make sure I've wiped it and washed it and cleaned it. And then I wet and print immediately after I've cleaned it. And I don't leave the wood sitting around damp and then print with that damp water. I just keep wiping and keep it clean. So just a couple of heads up if you're going to start using random bits of found wood.
So I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of some of the woods available and join me for the next film.